Much has been learned about the genetics of flowering in the past 20 years, especially from research on the plant Arabidopsis. How the plant makes the transition from a vegetative meristem to a flowering meristem and then forms a flower involves complex genetic interactions. Presented here is a simplified version in which I have conveniently divided the process into three successive stages. The first step in flowering is flower initiation in the shoot apical meristem, which is the result of the activation of so-called meristem identity master genes. The activation of these genes converts the vegetative meristem into a flowering meristem. That is, the shoot apical meristem goes from making new shoots and leaves into making a flower. Once the meristem has made this floral transition, the second genetic stage is the activation of genes involved in the spatial arrangement of the four floral organs. As shown in the diagram on the right, most flowers consist of sepals, petals, stamens, and carpels, typically arranged in four concentric whorls. Simply put, the second stage is involved in the arrangement of the four floral organs, sort of like arranging the chairs in a room. The third genetic stage involves seating the four guests in their chairs. That is, through differential expression of three basic floral identity genes, each of the four different floral organs is formed in the correct place. The so-called ABC model of flower formation explains how the differential expression of these genes results in specific organ formation. Going back to stage one, the initial question is what triggers the activation of the meristem identity master genes? In many plants, the transition from vegetative to flowering plant is controlled by the photoperiod, that is, the relative length of the night. Much of what we know about the genetics of flowering comes mainly from studies of such plants over the past 100 years. From such studies came the idea that a substance produced in the leaves, which sense the photoperiod, is what triggers flowering. The substance was named Florigen in 1936. After nearly 70 years of research trying to identify the chemical nature of Florigen, most plant scientists now agree that Florigen, at least in Arabidopsis, is a protein called FT. The story goes like this. When the leaves perceive a photoperiod conducive to flowering, they produce a relatively large amount of FT protein sufficient to trigger flowering. The FT protein then travels from the leaves to the shoot apical meristem via the phloem. The FT protein is thought to activate another protein called FD in the shoot apical meristem, which in turn triggers the activation of the meristem identity master genes. There are other factors that trigger flowering besides photoperiod. There are so-called autonomous flowering signals that may be affected by plant size or age that also trigger flowering. Such autonomous flowering signals are thought to initiate the floral transition through activation of the meristem identity master genes. These genes may also be affected by the plant hormone gibberellin, especially in so-called rosette plants. Think lettuce and cabbage, for example. Recent research has also implicated microRNAs in the regulation of meristem identity master genes. These are small bits of RNA that interact with message RNA during protein synthesis. But it's way too complex to go into here. In studies of the temperature effects on flowering, a protein was discovered that actually blocks the activation of the meristem identity master genes. This protein, called FLC, effectively locks the shoot apical meristem 
in the vegetative state. It has been known for many years that some plants, especially biennial plants such as beets, carrots, winter wheats, etc., require extended cool periods before they can flower. This allows them to know that they've been through winter. This process is called vernalization. We now know that vernalization works by effectively removing the FLC protein. When the FLC protein is absent, we say that the plant is competent to flower. That is, flowering may now occur under the right conditions. Even from this simplified slide, it's clear that the story of the genetics of flowering is a complex one. It's also important to note that the story varies depending on plant species, although the basic framework of the story is likely the same.